Hey, welcome in everybody to the latest edition of the Royal Take. We are here with Ryan Bizarro and Hector Diepa. Is that your Diepa? Diepa. Okay, and both very loyal season ticket holders of our Royals that were there for every game this season. And now we're going to break down the season as a whole and talk about guys that we think are going to be a big part. It's tough to predict with everybody, but that we hope for some and that you know for others most likely are going to be a big part of the 22 and 23 club going forward. Because we did talk about it in the post-game press conference with Kirk, how perseverance and finding different ways to fight, like they did battle back in the last two games, just couldn't find the final goal. Uh, you, It's been a big thing with this team and also passed on leadership. It seems like from the Ebbings, the Shars, and Gucci's of the world, the young guys like the Morrisons, Bykovs, as the year went on, they've talked really a lot like leaders. So the, the leadership torch has kind of been passed on. So we'll get into all of that. But first and foremost, how are you two doing this evening? I'm doing all right. Missing I'm hockey, doing... but but that's yeah. point of the game. Yeah, it was a juggernaut series that one of the juggernauts had to – uh, win in the end where one of the better rookie goaltenders in Petrozelli, uh, all CH, I think it was all CHL rookie team and all CHL second team, if I remember correctly, from the um, league league teams. Um, but either way, he had a ridiculous rookie season and then he had off games. The Royals were able to get to him early in the series, but late in the series, he was able to tighten it up. And uh, he, all the games he won, he allowed two or less goals in the postseason, if I'm not mistaken, as well. So he's been sharp. The games he's won that he's been zoned in, he's been very tough to beat. And uh, that's what we saw in this past series against the Newfoundland Growlers as well. But we'll dive into, first and foremost, I've got to rhyme for this first, but throughout the postseason, it's not the end we wanted to see, but what players really did continue to impress you in the postseason that carry through from the regular season, especially guys that likely will still be running it back next season? Um, for one, I would go with Garrett McFadden. He came to us, I think it was game three in Maine after from the Phantoms and was huge on the penalty kill. And having it teamed up with Tom McEvin, who was originally a forward, was nice to see. Yeah. No, I, w- I would definitely say McFadden – was one that I thought was really good to see. I thought somebody for me, um, since I'll stick with the defense, because I thought this is just a guy that stepped up throughout the season, and he only played 30 for regular season games, ended up playing nine in the playoffs, as a good shot-blocking defenseman that is just decent stand-up defensively. I thought as he did all season, Shen stepped up as as the guy that's always been the extra defenseman, which he's always just been able to do. Uh... In, in his young career, this force he's only played 89 ECHL games. He hasn't even hit that 100 mark yet. But he's been able to be that guy that's able to come in, step up, and get it done uh, for the team. And I thought he was able to uh, uh, do that as well. So since we're in the theme of defense, uh, Hector, before we go to the forward core, who's somebody in the defensive core other than uh, Mike Shen or uh, Garrett McFadden that you really liked how they were able to perform in the postseason? I'm good. First off, thanks for having me on the show. Really appreciate it. Of course. And uh, I will go uh, Patrick McNally. He did pretty well. Yeah, McNally was what you would expect when healthy. Uh, I think he came back. I mean, everybody comes back for game seven. I mean, I think that's just we saw it in the NHL. Tristan, you already played for a damn broken foot. Uh, so, like, in a Game 7, Bergeron played through collapsed lungs before. And if he's retiring, by the way, congratulations on a hell of a career. Um, and But I think McNally uh, was fantastic this year. Someone's dog is also, I guess, agreeing yeah. with that, too. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but um, I thought McNally was fantastic in the regular season. I thought Cockrell also, to that same degree, came back and performed what he could in the final game as well, coming back from injury. And uh, he was able to perform fine in the final game and was a good veteran uh, defenseman for the Royals the entire season. Obviously, someone you got to give kudos to on the defense. That's likely going to be a phantom next year, I would think, over a Royal. But the London, Ontario native Mason Milton was Milton. exceptional uh, this entire season for the Red Royals. But um, when it comes to the forward for it's going to be interesting because this guy's been around for a minute. Uh, how much longer 
is he going to want to play? He almost has hit 300 career ECHL games, something Braden Lowe did do this season. Uh, Frank the Tank Pachara, I thought, was absolutely fantastic. The regular season and has always been a big game for former dating back to his junior college. Like, any, every level he's played at, uh, he's been that big game performer. Kirk uh, pr- pronounced that every single time he got a chance. And it showed as he throws his body around. Hopefully, he de- he wants to continue to run it back because he's a guy you want to have one to your team until he literally just doesn't want to play at all anymore. And you would think with how much of a gamer he is, even though he's been around for a while, he would. But we don't know with guys like that because it's not like you make a pretty penny at this level. You're playing for the love of the game when you're playing at this level. You're not playing for the cheddar stuff. Mm-hmm. But I'll go to uh, – I went to Ryan first the last time. I'll go to Hector first on this one. Uh, who was someone that you really enjoyed watching this entire season from the forward core that – um also you enjoy watching the postseason that could or could not be a part of the team next year because with Frank it'll be interesting to see what his decision is as well I mean I'm gonna go Brad Morrison he did a pretty good job I'm not gonna lie like he had two good goals in game six and game seven and he's very patient when he shoots yeah he's very patient and he makes uh he made a comment which I think was a wise comment um in terms of he also talks he's one of the guys like I said it seems like the leaders have rubbed off on him because he started talking like a, even though he's young in the league, like one of the leaders in the locker room by the end of the season. And he's only played 70 some collective games in these. So I think uh, Mo's a guy that's just going to continue to grow and is a perfect guy to have on your team. He's a former fourth round pick. He had a good successful season at the beginning of his AHL career with the rain and then kind of tampered off and now is having a lot of success at the ECHL level. We're happy to have him um and he uh talked about how great the locker room was leadership wise and how he relied on the guys like the Evans and the Dechars and the Gooches and the Lowe's to get him through the struggles early season because he's the first handful of games didn't get going and then just shot off like a firecracker and then the same kind of happened in the postseason he had some off games and then started shooting off later in the series and then that's what happened in this series so I think he's a guy that's going to be pivotal uh, wasn't just pivotal for this team, but is obviously going to be pivotal going forward as well. So that was definitely a, a very good pick. Uh, Ryan, who would be a guy that really popped off for you that um, you want to mention first and foremost in the uh, forward core? I'm definitely going to go off the guy who you just briefly touched on him, Trevor Gooch. Here's, like we talked about Gooch. We talked about, we talked about earlier, Joe. He joined us in December, and the numbers he put up were astounding. I mean, 61 points in 52 games who could ima- only can imagine what his numbers would have been if he played all 72 of us he's someone i think could get an ahl deal hopefully with the phantom so he stays in the system but i really loved how gooch played and after he it seems like every game in the postseason year against maine or newfoundland he was always getting beat up but he kept on playing gotta give him credit for that i give credit to the whole team for that one they just kept playing yeah, they kept roaring away. It's just Newfoundland had the their defensive system by rookie coach, former flyer and system man himself, Eric Wellwood. Uh, when they're able to get the lead and kind of just hold you down, that's been their successful calling card all season. So the Royals were not able to score the first goal enough, and they were able to play to their strengths, the Growlers, which is just keeping you to the outside, blocking every single freaking passing lane and shooting lane. So uh, it, it was just kind of you got to give the hats off to them for executing uh, flawlessly in that series. But, yeah, Gooch was fantastic. He uh, next season, because I would assume Trevor Gooch is good at that, I would think would come back. If he doesn't get an AHL deal, like you said, because I think he would have deserved that too. But if he is in the ECHL next season, he would hit his uh, century marking game. So he would get to that milestone next season. But – now we can move on to some of the things that we thought were some of the biggest strengths of this team. And I touched on it before the podcast where I thought perseverance, where they showed they had some struggle games, like when they struggled in trial Riviera early in the season and then went to Newfoundland and were able to get going up there. Um, so like, I always thought this team's perseverance and bounce back was always good. Not anybody really on this team would have back to back bad games often where if somebody had an off game, they would bounce right back and have a good game next game. And the depth, obviously, was key. So I think 
perseverance and the way that the depth was able to perform for Kirk McDonald and his staff, uh, Mac and his staff, was very pivotal for this Royals team. And I think that's going to continue in the next season because Cressy's a young guy you're going to keep. Bykoff, I would think, would be guys you definitely have going to the next season. I would think Pritch. Obviously, if the tank is coming back, he's going to stay with the Royals. Same goes with Ebbing. So we would hope those guys continue to keep playing. And uh, same goes with Brennan Saunier. And then you got Gooch. So you still have – everybody's not going to come back as Kirk said because that's not what happens in the business. But you have a lot of good young talent to build around. And if you were able to keep a couple of those veterans with that good young talent, even the Kirk Cups that played a couple games and Zane Franklin's or those guys that Kirk planned to just kind of have more for next year uh, building forward because each are very young in their careers. Franklin's played like over 60 games at Kirk Cup, only a handful. So I think they're building the team the right way. But I would say perseverance – and just how good they were able to roll out all four lines all season was one of the things I really took away from the Royals this season. Uh, I'll go oh. to uh, I'll go to uh, Ryan first, and then Hector on this one for your two biggest uh, takeaways or your three biggest I'll takeaways, I should say. I agree with you, Joe, on the depth. That was a big one. Like, we're gonna talk about him later. A guy like Kevin Connolly came to us in late in early April. And immediately made an impact. He's somebody that I think came back a good, good job finding this kid, and he's somebody we should bring definitely bring back next year. Yeah, I also think Mac uh, Will McKinnon was a great find by Kirk too. He only ended up playing one playoff game, but uh, he's supposed to sign a Phantoms contract next year, so we we'll see if he makes their team or uh, is down with the Royals to start the season. But either way, good for him because he ended up earning that coming in and having a fantastic. Mm-hmm. A job uh, through, um, through a couple guys down on the ice this season as well as a rookie defense and wasn't scared to go up against anybody. So that was very fun to see um, from somebody like him as well. But um, what was one of your biggest takeaways from this season, Hector? Um, I remember when I first came onto the show, I said that they were having trouble, like you know, playing together as a team. And oh, yeah, can, months ago now, yeah. Yeah, months ago. But I can honestly say throughout the season, they came together, they played, they, they learned to play together as a team. Yeah, the togetherness, I think early on, and that's kind of why I referenced that Canada trip, because that Canada trip, which was also months ago now, uh, but... That's it was like forever. The, yeah, that's when the Royals really started to show that group, like, togetherness of persevering and picking each other up. If one guy was having an off game, this line really picked up the play that game. Like Cressy's line, if if uh, the top line was having an off game, would pick up the play, and that would be what we talked about with depth. So I think that really started in the bad games at Trois Rivières to then growing into better games in Newfoundland up there and building that confidence as they were so good in Newfoundland this year. I think that's when they really started to take off where, for me um, – the togetherness of this team, I think, was a big, crucial thing. And then Morrison, Bykoff, and a lot of the other guys addressed that uh, this season in quotes and conferences about how tight-knit this group was. And uh, Mo even talked about how they're going to have one more week because uh, that's when everybody, I think, departs for their homes to kind of like have one last hurrah with this team since you're not going to have, as Kirk and everybody says, it's a business. You're not going to have the same grouping of guys. Some guys will probably retire. Other guys, you have new guys come in in the offseason via the free agency. But you're going to have a good grouping of these guys back that are part of this year's core that are also going to be part of next year's core. And it's going to be exciting to continue to see um, those guys grow with the team. Uh, that's for sure. Where I think that kind of moves into our next topic. If you were an armchair GM, obviously all of us three, with there's probably most guys we would want to keep on the team because of how much we pay attention to and just really love how guys fill out their roles. But I'll cap it at let's say seven because that's a good because that's a good grouping of guys you would have and probably what some actual GMs would do like write a top seven of well I need to keep these guys and then hopefully we can keep the rest. I'll start with. Uh, Hector on this one and then go to Ryan and you can pick some of the same people for this obviously because that would make sense in some hindsight so Hector who would be if you had to pick it's tough with this team with the depth but who would be in your top seven of guys to pick from and then goaltending would throw into a separate 
category uh, because that just that that adds an extra player. So we'll talk about goaltending next. I'm definitely gonna go Brad Morrison. Obviously, Trevor Gooch, Braden Lowe, Patrick Big Jow. I'm sorry, Bykoff. Um, Deshera, Pritchard, and Embig. Evan, okay, so that's seven. So you want a lot of veterans, so we'll have to see if all of, I hope all of those guys come back. We'll have to see if all the vets uh, run it back for another year, but that that, that makes total sense. Uh, Ryan, what, what direction are you going with your seven? All right, let's see. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get the roster now. Gooch. I give him Gooch. Bykov. I'm going to go I'm going to go Housinger. I really like Housinger's play this year. For free. Uh, I'm going to go Dominic Cormier for four. Evan cuz I think he's the, like we talked about Joe before the unofficial captain of this team. Yeah. And Frankie for sure. Frankie the for sure. And let's go Kevin Conley. I know we're going to talk about him later, but I really loved his play. Yeah, that's definitely a good seven. Um Mine would be, uh, I think you have to keep around Cormier. So I think you hit that. He had a breakout season. You're going to want to keep him around off of a breakout season. A guy that I've really liked, though, just because of how well he's more offensive than he showed here, just because of how deep our offensive defense is. So he hasn't had to play that role. But a guy I liked for just playing good on both ends is Sasir. So I would say you have to have guys like that that are just very reliable reliable Eddie defenseman, and I think those two very much fit into that category. Um, on offense, I agree with you. Kenny's a guy that I always like because he's one of those smaller guys, but he's a puck hound as a smaller guy that's good in front of the net, a uh, guy that's good on the deflections. So I would say uh, he would be a guy as well. So Cormier, uh, Kenny, and Cecil would be three. And then I would have to go with, obviously, Frank the Tank if he's going to keep playing, which I hope he does. Uh, he's a gamer. He's great every year. Um, he's good on both ends. Great body checker. I, you have to keep him. Ebbing, you have to keep as long as he continues playing. Another guy I have to throw in there, though, um, with Bykoff would be then my six. I want to throw I, – I really liked how Jackson played as a rookie as well, but I have to throw Pritchard in there above Jackson if I'm going with seven. So Jackson would be like – probably the guy that was the eighth with Conley. So it's like when you pick seven, it's tough because you have to pick your top seven where I hope they keep around all of these young guys that really started mixing in with the team that are newer in the league, plus are able to convince at least a few of the veterans, or, or even if they don't have to convince them, but have a few of the veterans stay in the Evans of the world, the Dechars, the McNallys, if they decide to continue playing or if they decide to move on. We have to venture that, and as well as Braden Lowe, who's obviously – as I said, this season uh, hit his milestone um, game this year. So if you include the postseason. So I think uh, he's a guy that um, that's going to be interesting to see what he continues to do. Where I hope we keep all these veterans around, but it's not realistic to think everybody's going to decide to keep playing. And it's not realistic to think all of these guys that we named are going to be back because that's just the nature of the beast in the business. But if a good grouping of these guys back, or on the team, I think this team has a great chance next year. And um, before we go into our next topic of the goaltenders to address that topic, they even addressed that in the kind of outro press conference yesterday where you can carry the great um, characteristics of this team of being so together, being a good persevering team, a team that really started to develop leaders and the younger guys from passing the torch. Those things can all carry into a following season to be able to build on the hungry for more attitude the we need to get this back like we need to answer back like we're trying to basically redeem like get revenge for what happened last season which next season you have a chance to do that off the beginning because you're playing hmm. newfoundland in newfoundland so it's good so that that's an easy chance to do that off the jump but now we can jump into the goaltending which mainly would we'll just focus on hockey Flodell and Nagel, since those are the three mains. Obviously, we had Clay's, Kote Kazanave, and 80 million other goaltenders. Uh, Darian Hansen play a game. Uh, so we had other guys play this season. But we're stick with Hawkey, Flodell, and Nagel, since those are the three mains. Nagel, I think, is the biggest. 
will he retire? He's been around forever, one of the top goalies of all time in the league, and is going to be 35 if he decides to play next season. But, uh, Ryan, what was your overall take on the top three goaltenders for our team this year? Definitely. Uh, for Nagel, I definitely like how he played with us. He definitely had some spurts where he didn't look as sharp. But then again, like you said, he's up there in age, so you can't have him look like that forever. And then for Odell, real quick, when we first got him from South Carolina, I wasn't impressed. But then he, I saw a little better defense in front of him. He definitely turned it on here. I think he, he's somebody we should look to bring back. But if he comes back, he might want the Phantoms usually provide us with goalies. So that's going to be interesting to see if they sign him to an AHL deal. Yeah. I do think the Phantoms, though, because if Sandy comes back now with Fedotov over in the Flyers system, I do think their goaltending room is a little crowded because they also are the ones that sign. Like, Hansen came down to play for us, but he was under contract with Yeah. Them. So, if they want to keep Darian and they have um, Sandstrom, Ursan's coming back from injury, and I Usti. think if Usti stays, Usti's going to be more signed by Redding because his contract's yeah. up and I don't see the Flyers signing him unless if the Phantoms give him an AHL deal. Uh, so... Their goaltending is a little crowded. I would say Flo will probably start with the Royals, yeah. but I could see the Phantoms giving him an AHL deal just so they don't lose him to how he's been getting yeah. loaned to AHL teams like Belleville, so they don't lose him to another organization. Mm -hmm. But I would say he would start the season, even if he gets an AHL deal with the Royals. That would be my prediction yeah. for Flo. But I thought he played well. I think a guy, uh, Van Nagel, obviously played very good as a veteran. And then also we have to remember he wasn't perfect. He was just a backup, but um, what's his name? Hawkey hasn't even hit 50 career games yet. So if you can grow him in an off season with your coaching staff and you envision on continuing to kind of work with him and grow his overall game, he is a guy that I would not by any stretch of the imagination say is a finished product yet. Cause if you have, yeah. you haven't even hit your first full same, you, know, you haven't even hit 50 career games yet. So I would say he, had his moments of sharpness and he had his moments of looking like a backup goaltender, but that's also what he is at this point and is trying to build up and grow into more. So I would say I was fine with how he performed. You just have to continue to grow some of his rebound control, glove side control and stuff, but that's all stuff you can work with where Fladell coming out of Acadia, he was sharp right away in the playoffs. He had some rebound stuff, but he's a rookie. So Petrozelli also, when we were able to beat him, was one of the best goalies in the entire regular season, and he had some rebound control issues. So in the games we won, so it happens at times when you're a rookie. I was impressed with our overall goaltending this year, even when Hansen came down and played very well for us in that one game because he's the guy I would throw into the conversation a little bit as well because he's the guy that had a chance to be with us still next year, where he he played very well uh, in the one game as well. But Hector, what was your overall um, assessment of the uh, team's goaltending this season? The goaltending was good up until, you know, the last three games, the, the last three games we lost. Uh, and don't know what happened with Pat Nagel. But unfortunately, sometimes you just have, it's not your time. And unfortunately, this year, just, you know, it's just saying our time will come later, you know. But we're definitely close to being a great, like, a dominant team. Yeah, I think the building blocks are there. We, t we mentioned all of them in this podcast, the different names you mentioned. You got yeah. Conley, a guy that is very good both ways um, as well, who they put on that um, reserve list or the like suspended list for protecting rights or whatever was uh, Kirk Cup, who it'll be interesting to see, excuse me, if he's somebody Kirk likes in the sense to keep around going in the next season, if he fits into that group, where I think that's kind of the next interesting thing to talk about yeah. Who kind of fits into that group? Because we brought in a oh. lot of guys. You would think McKinnon, if he doesn't make the Phantoms, is going to be obviously with the Royals next season. He brought in Ryan Carlson, who brings a lot of body checking ability, played a few games with the Admirals this year, only dressed in one for the Royals and didn't fare well in that one game, but that's one game. Uh, so is he a guy that'll come in and be one of those more physical defense before you? That's something they don't have, we don't have a heck of a lot of, and is Kirk Cup going to be one of those big boy forwards that can skate for you next year? And then Franklin's a good passer. That's one of those like Saunier esque stick up for your team guys as well. So are those guys in the plans for Kirk McDonald, that he, the guys that he tends to always bring in 
for the previous year that then become bigger guys for the next year. Uh, Ryan, what are your thoughts on some of those guys? And if you think those are kind of the guys that Kirk looked at, plus Kevin Conley, obviously, also, to be these are guys not just for this season, but mainly for next season, like the Carlsons and the Franklins of the world, especially, and Kirk Cup potentially as well. Yeah, I'm I'm looking up St. Franklin's numbers right now. Last year, two years ago, now and during the 2020 season, 60 games, 32 points, 125 penalty minutes. I can tell Royals fans will love him right away with that number. And three power play goals, though. He could play some power play time for us if Kirk wants him there. Yeah, and I think he adds a dimension where you got to be responsible, but he adds one of the dimensions like Sonia brought it when we got him from the trade deadline unexpectedly from the Phantoms, that extra jam that the Royals can be a physical team when they have to be, but they don't necessarily have that guy that's always going to go the extra mile with the jam where Sonia's that, Franklin's that. It's good to sometimes have that one guy mixed in. And you tend to see that even still in the upper levels with certain guys mixed in on each roster. You tend to still have that one guy that's able to step up to the plate. I'm on each team, so I think Franklin is a good passer, but also an obviously great fighter as well, so yeah, Royals fans I think will like him. Kirkups to me is an interesting guy to watch, because I thought he didn't produce points-wise, but he looked like a guy that, given time, looked comfortable on the ice. He just needs to grow into the speed of the pro level, and I feel like if you're able to keep him around, once he's able to do that, uh, he can kind of have a better career. And I think the same kind of goes for Carlson because Carlson's a bigger guy that's not the quickest skater. So those guys have to learn how to take advantage of their reaches and take advantage of kind of stepping in front of a guy and not always going for the hit and knowing when to just impede a guy, not interference wise, but impede a guy with a poke check and get the puck off of their tape and not always go for plastering them when that's not the best move. So I think that's a guy that might be able to have a round for defense next year, particularly if the Phantoms decide to go young and they take Mack and Millman to start the season, then you're going to have to obviously find more guys uh, to fill into that crop on defense there. But, um, Hector, who's out of that group of Conley, Kirkup, Franklin, um, who do you think um, is somebody, if you had a choice, to want to make sure we kind of have carrying around into – Next season, obviously, Conley, I think, is just an obvious one that we all talked about in this one, where the others are kind of more who do we think can con- that we might decide to keep into next season. Um, I will definitely go with Conley, definitely. And this was the defense, right, that we were talking about? I'm sorry. Well, you Conley, we talked about forward core-wise, but if you want to say somebody from the defense like McKinnon or – Oh, okay, McKinley. I'm sorry, I just got a little lost. Yeah, I did talk for a while, but um Yeah, I got a little lost and yeah, um so yeah, I'm definitely gonna go um definitely we wanna keep McFadden, Mc um a uh, Cockrell definitely on the defensive side. Because they those guys played incredible this season. Yeah, Cockrell is gonna be another interesting one. Um he's played uh large bunch of games in the ECHL. Hopefully he continues to want to keep going. And then if he does, yeah, I agree. We got to, you want to keep a ground up player like that. Um, It'll be interesting with the Phantoms because they probably are going to have three guys from the Royals that are going to be signed to their, at the AHL level next year, because you have Millman, you have McKinnon, and then you're going to have, uh, McFadden, so it's going to be interesting to see who doesn't make the Phantoms out of the gate that then starts with the Redding, and that's going to be that's going to be kind of one of the most interesting things to watch in camp next year, because they're probably going to have potentially three of the Royals really good defensemen from this year when they were active down here up in camp with them, so the preseason for the Royals is also going to give other defensemen many opportunities to uh, have a chance there in camp and everything to impress Kirk McDonald and the coaching staff because you might not have certain guys that are going to be part of the Phantoms camp. Yeah, and the Flyers, I don't know if you saw this show, the Flyers earlier signed a defenseman to an oh, entry level deal. Yeah, yeah, he's somebody that could be really high next year. Yeah, he'll yeah. we'll crowd the defense. Well, not crowd the defense. He's a good defensive defenseman. But he'll be, he'll be another guy that mixes into their defense. So. 
Yeah. He won the, the Flyers now brought on a guy that just won the championship in Russia and a guy that just won the championship in Sweden. Um, in, in back-to-back, in back-to-back moves with Janine. Janine is interesting, honestly, not to go off topic, but uh, we might even, because of how deep the, they are signing, they signed Karinchek, Rydell, the former captain at Ohio State, and also Colin Felix. So the defense is kind of getting deeper with these C-plus, C-level guys that you can develop. And Ronnie Adderd. Who yeah, was with the Flyers. yeah, they have Adderd that might struggle with the fans. Like you. So their defense, so it, it's possible certain guys can start with the Royals. I feel like Janing is definitely going to start with the Phantoms, but it would definitely be cool because he's such a sound defensive defenseman. If you did get him for a couple games in Reading, he's a good body checker, good defense defenseman. He's not going to do anything to wow you on offense. He's one of those guys that's just a defensive defenseman, good with his reach. Uh, he would be interesting to see because I think he would dominate the ECHL level where the uh, AHL level, he might have to adjust to North America more, but if you have that big of a reach at the ECHL level and you're able to just fend guys off the puck that well, I feel like even if you're adjusting to the North American game, those two things are going to make you really good while adjusting. Where at the AHL, things move a little bit quicker. Obviously, when you go up each level, you might have more of an adjustment period. But either way, I'm excited to see, because I didn't think he was going to sign, because the Flyers never signed guys that profile as, oh, he's not the sexiest thing to watch on the ice. He's just a good overall defenseman. Where your team tends to do that, uh, Hector and Ryan Lindgren, for one example, uh, who is a guy that, if you watch him on the ice, isn't the sexiest, most appealing uh, guy that does everything that wows you. He's just great defensively. And it's like, wow, those guys can do a lot for your team, too. So it was yeah. nice to see the Flyers focus on that because that, that honestly does put us into a good spot with the Royals, though. Kirk McDonald, and I'm sure you both would agree with this, somehow he does a perfect job at blending – or defense to have so many guys that you can put on the power play that are also lethal defensively. Like you have Cormier, you can use both ends. Sasir, you can use both ends. Shen's the only guy that you're probably going to use mainly defensively. Cockrell, you might say that too, but he can be on the power play as a passer. And then you have McNally and you have McFadden. Like you have so much two-way ability there. Same goes with McKinnon. That it, it gives you so much flexibility where – it's amazing with the Royals, especially because we have the most ECHL contracts usually compared to not having as much AHL guys as other teams, how much we're able to find guys that just fill that out so nicely. And that's why I think Kirk McDonald has always done such a good job because uh, for people that don't realize, because every ECHL coach isn't like this, some have a president of hockey operations, he does all the moves too. So if you want to knock him for maybe not making the adjustments in game and all that you also got to give him credit for getting all these players that are also going to be lethal for us next season as well so yeah definitely sure. yep exactly but this has been a pretty good uh 30 something minute episode on our royal take kind of talking about the strengths and weaknesses of our season but i think to wrap it up we would go to hector and ryan if there's any other players uh they really want to touch on where for me uh, we could probably keep this going for 32 hours, let alone 33 <laughs> minutes, but we'll do, we'll do different episodes uh, throughout the offseason. Love to have you guys on again to talk about different guys. And um, once moves come in, it'll be cool to be able to talk about that as well um, once certain transactions are made, obviously once the offseason kicks off and the Kelly Cup playoff uh, complete. But, uh, Hector, is there anybody else you wanted to address or talk about before we uh, wrap this one up? First off, I just want to say again, thanks for having me on the show. Congratulations on also working in the in the in the press box like during the game. Like, yeah, that, that yeah, that's awesome. a huge honor. It must have been an honor to work with in that box. We have yeah, the best announcer in the ECHL. Yeah, Eric's, Eric's was, uh, fun as heck to be in the booth because he's so energizing. It gets your energy. I mean, you don't really have to get your energy up that much because you're so excited to do the games anyway, but uh, you, 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 we both bounced off of each other well. That's why I hope to keep doing it in the future. I haven't heard anything yet, but definitely hope to uh, be able to keep doing that in the next season. But, uh, Ryan, what are some wrap-up things that you could you might have? Um, something to keep an eye on. It's not a player. It's a coach for the Royals. James Henry is a name to watch to see if he leaves for Adirondack in the summer. They let go of Alex Lowe, so I have a feeling he's – if he wants that job, he'll get it. Yeah, one of their all-time greatest players. And 
Uh, Kirk gave him the opportunity. Kirk's obviously a well-renowned head coach in the league, so he got to be mentored by a guy that's very well-respected, especially at the ECHL level. So, yeah, I would agree with you. I wasn't even thinking about that, but, yeah, you're you're – you're right. That's actually a very good point. And then, but I, I'm not, I love uh, James Henry. I thought he's done a fantastic job this year, but I feel like Kirk McDonald talked about one of his strengths being finding guys that gel well, not just on the coaching staff, but also in the players. And I think he'll be able to do that again because Henry, they brought him in this year and he meshed so well with his team and with K-Mac. I don't want to lose James Henry by any stretch, but I would also have to applaud him if he does get that job because he would have earned it and deserved it. So uh, it's kind of like you look at it with the players. You don't want to lose Garrett McFadden, Will McKinnon, and Millman to the Phantoms. But like Kirk always says, you got to applaud them and be happy for them that each of them played so well at this level to get rewarded with more play at the next level. So that would be kind of one of my final points and takeaways. But thank you, everybody, for joining us. For Hector, Ryan, I'm Joe. Have a great, safe offseason, everybody. We'll be doing more videos in the offseason of the Royal Take. The season didn't end in the 20th year anniversary as you wanted, but it was a very memorable season. A couple Gooch hat tricks, a couple Ebbing hat tricks, great plays by Morrison, um, Bykoff, and others. Uh, so it was a very fun season to follow of Royals hockey, and it's going to be very fun covering the team in the offseason, in the play, in the offseason, excuse me, in the summer and going into next season where obviously we hope to be a Kelly Cup playoff team, which I think we will be again, and have some revenge on our minds going into next season. Peace out, everybody. Stay safe. This has been the season wrap-up edition of the Royal Take.